Hey friends and welcome back to a new video. Today I will be doing the reader problems tag. I was tagged by my lovely friend Sam from the book bunch and I'll have her channel linked below. Please go check her out. She's amazing. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started with the first question, which is you have 20,000 books on your TBR. How in the world do you decide what to read next? This is definitely a problem for me. Now I don't have 20,000 books on my TBR, maybe 1500 on my Goodreads TBR, but it still feels very daunting, especially because I love so many different genres and I'm always wanting to read absolutely everything. And I think that's one reason I read so fast, but deciding what my next read will be is quite difficult for me because I find myself in the mood for something and then I'll start a book that fits that mood. And then I'm in the middle of that book and I'm in the mood for something else. So I really do follow my mood. I'm honestly all over the place when it comes to this. So that's typically why I read more than one book at a time. But yeah, I guess just I follow my mood. <laughs> Question two is you're halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? So I definitely used to push myself to continue reading a book, even if I wasn't enjoying it that much, at the least to just skim read it if I didn't want to read the whole thing. But I'm finally in a place where I'm comfortable with just not continuing on with a book that I'm not enjoying. The hardest thing for me though is when it's a beloved book, when it's especially a classic and absolutely everyone seems to love it. And I just hate feeling like the odd one out that doesn't love the book. Just as an example, I DNF'd both the Three Musketeers and The Count of Monte Cristo, which are both very, very beloved French classics. And I just was not enjoying them and I didn't want to push myself through. And I definitely got some interesting responses when I DNF'd them, but that's completely okay. Everyone's entitled to their opinions, but now if I'm halfway through a book and not loving it, I just quit because I don't have time for that and I wanna make time for the books that I feel I would love. Question three is the end of the year is coming and you're so close, but so far away on your Goodreads reading challenge. Do you try to catch up and how so? So I think this tag might've been meant to do towards the end of the year and this question isn't really applicable right now. It is only March and right now I'm ahead of my goal on Goodreads, which I'm happy about, but I'm trying to not make it about the numbers this year and just enjoy what I'm reading. But let's say it was the end of the year and if I was behind, I would definitely try to catch up. Question four is the covers of a series you love don't match. So how do you cope? This is something that definitely bugs me when covers within a series don't match much more than if it's a paperback versus a hardcover. I don't mind if some of the books in the series are paperback, some are hardcover, some are mass market. That doesn't matter to me. I just like the covers to kind of all flow and to just all be within the same edition. It isn't the end of the world if they don't match, but it's just a preference. Question five is everyone and their mother loves a book you don't really like. Who do you bond with over shared feelings? <laughs> So I definitely read Goodreads reviews from people who seem to have similar feelings and thoughts towards the book. If I'm not liking it, I'll kind of look at like one star, two star reviews just to feel like I'm seen and I'm understood. On the flip side, I will sometimes read negative reviews for books that I love. I just find it very entertaining. And oftentimes the things that are criticized by certain people about a book are the things that I end up loving about that book. But yeah, if I'm not enjoying a book and everyone seems to love it, then I'll read the more negative reviews and kind of see if people have similar opinions as I do just because I feel like my opinions are more valid that way. I don't think this is necessarily a good thing, but it's just what I do. Question six is you're reading a book and you're about to start crying in public. How do you feel? So first of all, I'm not a huge crier when it comes to books. And I also don't really read in public all that often, the exception being audiobooks. But even then, I'm not usually actively listening to an audiobook while just out and about in public. It's mostly when I'm driving. So I just haven't had that experience where I've gotten emotional from a book in public, but I've definitely even cried in front of family members from a book. <laughs> Question seven is a sequel of a book you loved just came out, but you've forgotten a lot from the prior novel. Will you reread the book, skip the sequel, try to find a synopsis on Goodreads or cry in frustration? My first step is always to find a really detailed review if it's available. I love when Goodreads reviews are super, super detailed and it just makes me remember the important points about a certain book and then I'm comfortable to go on to the sequel. But my absolute favorite thing, and it's not common unless it's like a classic or a really, really popular book, is to find detailed plot summaries online. And so I'll read through that and then go on to the next book. If Goodreads is no help, and if I can't find a detailed summary, then I'll try to skim through the book and just hope for the best, hope that it triggers some memories. I have terrible, terrible memory. And so when I do remember something about a book and the characters, it makes me feel so, so good. It just, it's not, often than I do. So I often need 
a big reminder in some way, shape or form. If worse comes to worse and I just can't remember, I will reread the book, but I try to avoid it. Question eight is hilarious to me. So it's, you don't want anyone, anyone borrowing your books. How do you politely tell people nope when they ask? I am a people pleaser. I really, really struggle to just say no, but I've gotten so much better at this, especially with books because I've had so many experiences where I've had books come back ripped, bent, utterly destroyed, water damaged, and I just don't appreciate when others don't appreciate how much I love my books. <laughs> I do let people borrow books that are very, very close to me or like immediate family members, some of my closest friends who I really do trust, but it just makes me really sad that there are many books I have not gotten back and then a lot of them I got back damaged. So yeah, I'm just at a point where I just, I say no, sorry. I'm really curious to hear how you guys deal with people asking to borrow your books. I know not everyone really cares about books being damaged, but I personally do. It drives me insane if I'm the one that accidentally damages a book. So when other people do it, I'm just like, oh, it hurts. <laughs> Question nine is you've picked up and put down five books in the last month. How do you get over your reading slump? So for me, my reading slumps show up unannounced and all I really can do is to continue reading. And then I usually end up reading a book that kind of, you know, brings me out of it. I guess it's like the easy palate cleanser type books, but there isn't anything in particular that I, I guess, gravitate towards when I am in a reading slump. I just keep reading. Watching booktube does really help me though. So that's definitely one big thing for me. Question 10 is there are so many new books coming out and you're dying to read them. How many do you actually buy? I'm definitely interested in new releases and I'm always kind of on the look out for them on Goodreads, but I'm definitely more of a backlist reader. My personal preference is to read books that already have a lot of reviews on Goodreads and a lot of the times new releases do, but I do like to wait and see if there are people that I trust that I follow on Goodreads or Booktube and if they've read the book first, I then feel a lot more comfortable going and purchasing it. So for the most part, with the exception of a few authors, I generally don't really buy new releases all that often. That's definitely changed in the last couple of years. I find myself definitely buying more. I think I just get too nervous with new releases. I'm scared that I won't like them. So I tend to just not really buy them unless, like I said, someone that I trust has read it and either loved it or didn't love it. Then I kind of know where I would probably stand on the book. I'm really curious to hear if any of you guys can relate to that. And then question 11, this is the last question. After you've bought the new books you can't wait to get to, how long do they sit on your shelves before you get to them? Months, sometimes years. There are definitely exceptions, but for the most part, when I buy a book, it's not read for many, many months. That's what happens when you just collect and collect and collect books and start creating a little library and you also read from the public library. The books just accumulate and you definitely can't get to all of them within a short time after purchasing them. And that is it. Those are the 11 questions for the reader problems tag. It was a really interesting one and I feel like very relatable for readers, definitely. Please let me know what your answers would be for each of these questions. They are in the description box below if you are interested in seeing them. And that's it for this video. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I won't be tagging anyone in particular, but if you would like to do this tag, if you find it interesting, please consider yourselves tagged. And like I said, that's it for this video. Thank you all so, so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.